January 29th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Mark Chapter 1 from the New Testament The Beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God As it is written in Isaiah the Prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. In the wilderness, John the baptizer began preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People from the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem were going out to him, and he was baptizing them in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. John wore a garment made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, One more powerful than I am is coming after me. I am not worthy to bend down and untie the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my one dear son. In you I take great delight. The Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, enduring temptations from Satan. He was with wild animals, and angels were ministering to his needs. Now after John was imprisoned, Jesus went into Galilee and proclaimed the gospel of God. He said, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the gospel. As he went along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, Simon's brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will turn you into fishers of people. They left their nets immediately and followed him. Going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in their boat mending nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Then they went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people there were amazed by his teaching, because he taught them like one who had authority, not like the experts in the law. Just then there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, Leave us alone, Jesus the Nazarene. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him. Silence, come out of him. After throwing him into convulsions, the unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they asked each other, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He even commands the unclean spirits and they obey him. So the news about him spread quickly throughout all the region around Galilee. Now as soon as they left the synagogue, they entered Simon and Andrew's house with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law was lying down, sick with a fever, so they spoke to Jesus at once about her. He came and raised her up by gently taking her hand. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered by the door. So he healed many who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons. But he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Then Jesus got up early in the morning, when it was still very dark, departed and went to a deserted place, and there he spent time in prayer. Simon and his companions searched for him. When they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. He replied, Let us go elsewhere, into the surrounding villages, so that I can preach there too, for that is what I came out here to do. 
So he went into all of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. Now a leper came to him and fell to his knees, asking for help. If you are willing, you can make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean. The leprosy left him at once, and he was clean. Immediately, Jesus sent the man away with a very strong warning. He told him, See that you do not say anything to anyone, but go show yourself to a priest, and bring the offering that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. But as the man went out, he began to announce it publicly and spread the story widely so that Jesus was no longer able to enter any town openly, but stayed outside in remote places. Still, they kept coming to him from everywhere. God, when I read this chapter, I, I think of... I think a lot of people think that it's awesome that all these people were coming to you. And uh, sometimes I think of even some of the, the mega churches and how some people focus on how many people they have instead of why you have created us and what you've created us to do. You were there to preach, to preach the good news to people, and yet they were getting so caught up in the miracles, uh, the sparkly things, the things that you could do for them, that they were completely missing the point of why you were even there and what was about to happen to you. And I think about our own lives that we miss the point. We go to church and we miss the point because we're whining because the person in front of us is fidgeting or the music is too loud or our favorite pastor isn't preaching that weekend. We miss the point when friends reach out to us and all we can think about is, oh my goodness, could they just once ask about how I'm doing instead of always whining about their lives? We miss the point. The point is they need us and they feel like they can trust us and count on us. We miss the point when somebody approaches us asking for help whether that's money or food or whatever the situation is. We miss the point because we're so caught up in, is this person trying to scam me? I don't want this person around me. So today, God, I ask you to help us not miss the point. The point of why we are called into existence, the point of why we are here, the point of why certain things happen or don't happen to us every day, day in and day out. I have realized that there is nothing bad that happens in my life. Now, I might miss the point and say it's bad at the time, but everything that happens in my life, you've always made good. You've always made incredibly good things happen because of my choice of the word bad and what was happening at the time. Now that good doesn't necessarily have anything to do with me. Again, I would be missing the point. The point is you used it for what you needed it to be used for to glorify you. So today, God, let's try and take off our blinders of what we expect, of what we want, of what we, of the sparkly things that we think that we want to see. And allow us to just be open to anything. Allow us to be open to anything that is happening. Allow the people that you want sent into our lives to come without filters on our part. Allow the situations that you have put in our life to come and for us to not react so selfishly towards them. But to really look and figure out what it is that you're trying to show us. You promise all the things good. So I don't know why we get into this bad habit of always looking for the bad, but today I really want us to remember the real reason why we're here on earth and not get caught up in the miracles, whether that be TV or the internet or drama, but the real reason that we're here. 
to go make disciples and be reflective people of your amazing love and grace and forgiveness. Thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.